Hey guys, good morning. So we're revisiting these brush inks. Um, they've had plenty of time to cure and we're going to go ahead and erase all the pencil lines. Before we get started, we wanna start with a nice clean slate. Now, in case you guys have forgotten, this was inked in the Denik Inktober notebook that came in my Art Snacks Inktober box. You can check out um, a couple of those videos by clicking here on the annotations. You can check out the unboxing right here and the overview right here. I highly recommend you guys check out the overview if you haven't yet. It's full of great information. It includes a price breakdown, uh, duplicate items that or dupes that would work just as well as some of the ones sent in the box that might be a little prohibitively expensive and demonstrations of everything inside the box. So if you're interested in inking and you don't really know where to start, I really recommend you start there. I did a pretty good job on it. And I have many other inking videos inspired by this inking box. So if you wanna learn how it's done, you can check those out. All right, so that is erased. Sorry, uh, bending back something so it's out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and use an Alvin drafting brush. I love this thing. I've had mine for several years if you take even moderately decent care of it, it will last pretty much forever and they're inexpensive. And you might not think you need a brush to remove your eraser shavings, but it helps. And for like seven bucks, I mean, you know, one time investment. So I actually have no idea how well Copic markers handle on this paper. Um, that was one of the reasons why I did this and why we're, we're going to find out today. This has been inked with Kai Mei Drawing Soul K. This is a Copic proof ink. It was recommended to me by my friend uh, Cassie. You can check out more of her work on her Twitter at Ferret Party or you can check out her comic Catnip Circle. If you like cute stuff, I definitely recommend you check that out. And she recommended the Soul K quite a few years ago. I've been using it since. And I figured that since this Denik paper is pretty smooth in surface, it should handle alcohol markers pretty well. Just gonna put down an all over base coat for right now. And you wanna make sure you get all the graphite up because graphite can ruin your nibs. In fact, this one here needs changing. It's looking pretty wet. All right, so we've got that first layer down. I'll go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see what I'm up to. Gonna use the same color to just sort of darken and uh, introduce some shadows. And this marker's starting to feel a little dry, so I'm gonna have to refill that. And I'm applying a little bit of blush using Blix Shell. Then moving on to Copic's T-Rose. And I'm gonna start darkening skin tones up with E51 Milky White. And so far this uh, paper handles pretty much like Plate Bristol in terms of ink uh, markering. It is thinner than Plate Bristol, so perhaps more like a smooth finish card stock. is another one that could benefit from a refill. Go ahead and use a Copic Chow to add shadow to the eyes.
All right, um, now the skin and hair are mostly done. I'm gonna slide on over to her shirt. And I did not swatch at a, ahead of time. So I'm just gonna do so down in the corner. And we'll use Latte to begin with, and that's another Blick Studio brush color. Now something that can be a, an annoying problem when you're using alcohol markers over inks is even if the inks are alcohol marker proof, you may still get some pickup. Um, and that's usually when your inks have, like there's like a fairly thick deposit of ink so perhaps it didn't cure all the way through or there's just no way it can cure all the way through because there's so much of it on the page. Um, this is definitely a problem if you're using some of the nibs that put down a heavier line like a G-nib. And unfortunately, I don't know of any good solution to that issue. But if any of you guys do, please, please do take a moment to leave uh, the answer in the comments below. I'm sure my other viewers will be very appreciative for that. For the most part, I just avoid using uh, nibs if I know I'm gonna be using Copics later on. In fact, in general, I find that using the Sailor Mitsuo Ida, which you guys have seen me use on this channel many, many times in the past, doesn't give me any of those sort of problems. So that's what I usually use if I wanna do some marker work. Give that a minute to dry. Switch on over to swatching for the shirt. And we have a little bit of bleeding. So I'll go ahead and push that back a bit with the latte. And if you guys enjoy these sort of videos, I highly recommend you check out my Instagram because um, lately with these sort of things that can be done um, with time lapse, I have used my phone to catch an alternate angle and I share the time lapse videos up on my Instagram. So that's sort of like a sneak peek into what I'm working on for the channel. Actually, I'm gonna slide on over to dark brown and then blend that out with latte. Unfortunately, that sort of recording um, does cause some cast shadows over what I'm doing because the phone sort of blocks my light source a little bit. Um, I guess you guys can tell then that I am doing a dual recording right now. As an artist, I enjoy um, playing around with how things are presented and what media, what formats I present them in, in addition to, you know, creating the things. And for simple things like this, it's often more about what I can share with you guys than what I'm doing on the page. So that brown isn't blending out quite as nice as I'd hoped. I may just have to continue to try to layer it. And you guys can see we're actually getting a fair amount of bleed through. This really is like, um, like doing marker stuff on cardstock. Unfortunately, if you enjoy using cardstock for your markers, um, these Denik notebooks are, seem to be at least like this seem to be special edition art snacks only because when I was pricing them in the overview, I couldn't find anything comparable. If other people enjoy it, I actually don't care for it. If other people do enjoy it though, you guys should write to Danek and let them know you would be interested in purchasing more of these notebooks. That's always something that frustrates me when companies do special edition um, products that utilize something like, like a paperweight, for example, that they might not otherwise do um because then you can't replicate it so once you've used up your special edition what have you you know that's the end of that 
I know some of you guys are probably thinking, well, that's the point. But I really appreciate consistency. So, you know, for me, it would be a reason not to purchase it. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the shoes. And I want these to be little red sandals. So I'm starting out with a pink. Because if you want to do shiny things, it's really good to start out with a much lighter color than what you plan on ending up with. So while that's drawing, I'll go ahead <clears throat> and handle my cast shadows using a very light blue violet. You don't want to use these all over because they do have a tendency to make things look a little bit muddy. And blue violets are a good sort of basic shading color for warmer browns. So if you want to knock in some larger areas of shade on a color like latte here, a blue violet would be a good way to do that. Coming in now with those stronger reds. And I'm actually gonna wait, in fact, to add that last red. Now, we're, there's my signal. I can start, hopefully, adding some highlights with a white signal pen. And I find if you're adding highlights, it actually increases believability if you break the line work a little bit with your highlight. All right, so I think we're about done. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always fun to get to do marker things and we've been sort of busy doing um, a lot of watercolor stuff over for Watercolor Basics on the blog. And we've also been doing a lot of um, inking stuff over here. So it's nice to get to do some more immediate color Sometimes I forget how nice it is to just be able to color something quickly. Adding a little bit of a border with a very light blue. I think it's B00, B000. Um, just to sort of help ground the figure on the, on the picture plane. If you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to help you out. And uh, if you're interested in more of my alcohol marker tutorials, I have an entire playlist dedicated to alcohol markers. So you can click right here to check that out. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to hit like. That helps me out a lot. And um, if you haven't yet, why don't you subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you have any friends or family who might enjoy this or you just want to help me out, please take a moment to share this video to your social networks using those handy buttons right below the video. It's a big favor to me and I really appreciate it when you guys do that. You help me find um, a new audience and makes you look like a really cool person because you're sharing great art resources. And um, it helps your friends out too because intro it introduces them to a new educator that they might not otherwise know about. If you enjoy this sort of content and video might not be the format you enjoy it the most in, head on over to the blog at natosoup.blogspot.com for written reviews and tutorials. Um, 
And finally, if you want to help support this blog financially, there's a few ways you can do that. You can click the affiliate links when they are provided. Um, if you're interested in the product, of course, um, it doesn't cost you any extra to purchase using my affiliate links. Amazon pays that bounty. Two, if you would like to have me come in and teach a class um, that is totally doable, I am available via Skype for those of you who live far away. But for those of you who live in Tennessee or in uh, Louisiana, get in contact with me and we may be able to arrange a school visit. I always love getting to talk to groups of people. It gets me really fired up. As you guys can tell, I enjoy that kind of stuff. And it helps me out because it's another form of income, which is always needed. So if you're interested in that, send me an email or shoot me a, com a comment and we'll start getting that going. Um, finally, if you wanna help financially support this this channel and the blog in a smaller but equally important way, head on over to the Patreon at patreon.com slash soup for information on how to join the community of art nerds. So again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. It's always a pleasure. I love seeing you guys. I love sharing the things I love with you guys. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.